how is this person over here bringing some more sex positivity into the world? I'm Dr. Liz from Sex Positive Psych. I'm Intimacy from Poly Free Love. And I'm so excited to talk with Intimacy today about all of the stuff that, what are your pronouns? They, them, amazing, she, he. Okay, so that they, she, he, amazing are doing. So Intimacy, tell me about what it is that you do. Um, so I'm a nanny and I only take parents and kids who are okay with me being a sex positive nanny. Oh good. And I give their parents details about the things I'm gonna be teaching them and I have a conversation with them about, okay, how old is the kid? Hypothetically, the kid's already one. Okay, the first time the baby touched themselves when they were three, four, five, six months old, what did you do? I told them, no, stop, move their hand. Okay, <laughs> we're not going to do that moving forward. If you want me to be their nanny, you're going to have to do the homework at home too. Mm-hmm. And that means not shaming them for touching themselves as infants and children because a lot of adult shame around sexuality and masturbation started back then, but nobody knows that until you do the research and you're trying to grow and process and all this stuff. Yeah. One of the funniest <laughs> stories I saw online about that was someone told their kid, honey, I know it feels good to touch your clip. We do that in our rooms, not at the dinner table. Yes, exactly <laughs> that. Exactly <laughs> that. And parents are like, oh, but they can't even talk. It doesn't matter. You're talking to them. You're giving them the proper wording around it. You're teaching them that it is okay to touch my body because mm-hmm. mommy didn't tell me no, not to do that. Yeah. So you're a nanny. What other stuff do you do? I'm a sex surrogate. I sex surrogate. prefer the term compassionate companion. Okay. Because it seems less daunting for my clients and people have triggers around the word sex, but most people don't have triggers around the word compassionate or companion. Right. They seem like really gentle words, but still are the same thing. So for those of you who don't know the history of sex surrogacy or what's sometimes called intimate partner therapy, Uh, When Masters and Johnson were developing one of the first therapeutic treatments for issues like erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, vulva pain, uh, they developed this therapy called sensate focus therapy. That's all about touch and sensation and moving away from an orgasm or penetration focused model of sex. The therapy, however, required a couple, it required two people. So when they had people coming to them who were solo, who were single, they couldn't do this therapy. So they started training people to be surrogate partners to fill in and do this therapy with them, to help them learn about how to receive touch on their own body, how to give touch on their own body, how to receive touch, uh, or how to give touch on another person's body and watch that person receiving touch. And it's a way to help people move past a lot of the ideas that create what we often call sexual issues, Mm -hmm. but that in a lot of ways are about cultural conditioning and and worries and fears. Right, right. And so much of people's sexual assumptions and self-imposed expectations yeah is either not as knowledgeable about our bodies because advertising you know right everyone's supposed to be in a heterosexual relationship and everyone's supposed to have sex missionary style and if you have a vagina you should come from penetration (laughs) yes and that should be the best way to come Or it's not real. (laughs) None of that is true. As Freud said, clitoral orgasms are immature orgasms. Mature orgasms are penetration orgasms. How ironic that a straight cis man is the person who put forward that theory. (laughs) So it's about teaching them, you know, sex is finding pleasure within your own body, with yourself, knowing where those pleasures are. And being able to communicate those pleasures with any other people that you choose and negotiate to have sexual shared pleasurable experiences with. And so then how for you does this therapeutic work play out? Like how do people find you? What kind of work do you do with them? So people find me either from referrals or they find me from Googling, Mm -hmm. looking up information. There are ways to find me without it having to be a referral. Um, And then... I have a conversation with either the referral people or the people who didn't have referrals about how they need to be um, actively seeking and participating in, on a regular basis, some sort of mental health professional help. Mm -hmm. I'm not specific about what that is. I'm very open-minded about what it could be. Sure. Um, The difference is they have to be okay with me talking to that person so that we can all be on the same page about what are the goals. Where's the growth journey going? And I let my client tell me what they're seeking as an outcome. Okay. And we 
try to go towards that and get as close to their ideals about it as we can. And then sometimes it changes and they're like, well, I said this in the beginning, but now that I know more about me, this is what I really need. And it's like, great, this is why we're doing this. Yeah. You know? um, and it's called a triadic model when you have more mm-hmm. than one care provider working together for the greater good of the person seeking growth. Yeah, and integrated care is so important. Uh, for a lot of sexual health concerns because there can be body and biological related issues. A lot of medications have sexual side effects Mm -hmm. that doctors don't often assess in their patients. Or don't tell their patients. Or don't tell them about, yeah. Mm -hmm. A a lot of uh, different physical health conditions can also have sexual correlates that create problems for them. So things like blood pressure issues, diabetes can cause issues with erection. Uh, Menopause can cause changes in how vaginal tissue responds. Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh. lubrication in particular like. yeah and there's a, a thinning of the tissues so it's much easier to tear so there's a lot of different aspects that can be involved and when you have integrated care it's much easier to help people with those right right so then once we get past all that my initial meeting is we meet for dinner in a public place mm-hmm. that we both agree upon and I usually pick places and give them choices that I know have a quiet bar section where people don't usually sit and eat or Mm -hmm. a back patio that nobody really knows about. I call them make sure it's not booked and hey, I need to specifically sit back here because we're going to be having a private conversation and the restaurants, I've never gotten a no yet. It's always a sure, thanks for letting us know. Make sure you tell the hostess when you come in that you're specifically going to be seated in the back where there might not be a waiter, but we'll send one back there for you guys so we have privacy. Um, and the stipulation is they pay me my initial consultation fee plus dinner. Okay. <laughs> like, and food is easy because when people feel nervous, they can just go into their soup and I just mm-hmm. give them space and I just kind of talk until it looks like they're ready to talk. Oh, and, yeah. You know, I try to make it soft for them. And I give them a two-hour window, but it's up to them if they just want 10 minutes with me or the whole two hours. Like, it's okay. whatever's best for them. It's the same fee. If you're there for 10 minutes or two hours, my initial consult is still the same price. You got to pay it up front. Yeah. It's up to you. What do you love about this work? What I love about this work is people having their aha moments. Mm. Like, for instance, um, I might cry because I'm menopausal. Hey, (laughs) I cry all the time and I'm not menopausal, so no excuse needed. (laughs) Right, right. And I'm not shaming people that cry that are not in menopause either. I I just personally don't like to cry. That's a me thing. Um, But it's the aha moment. And an example I'm going to use myself is um, I'm 40 now. Yay. Going to be 41 soon. Woo. When I was 35, I felt like I was an alien. And I was like, why can't I be monogamous like everybody? Yeah. Because I've known since I was six, I'm not monogamous. That shit don't make sense to me. (laughs) And I don't have to be that, so fuck you. But where are my people? Yeah. I had no community. Yeah. Um, And so some chick saw me ranting about it in a swingers group. And she was like, hey, I'm your people. I know where your people are. And I was like, where are they? And she's like... You're polyamorous. And I was like, Google, what's polyamory? And I read it and I was like, that's me. That's what I am. There's nothing wrong. Where are these people? Um, And so she put me in a North Texas poly group and there was like 800 members in my own community, like my backyard, my neighborhood, around the corner, at the grocery store, at the church, at the strip Mm. club. Like we're everywhere. And it's like, I'm not alone. I'm not an alien. There's nothing wrong with me. Okay, stop beating yourself up in your head. Oh, yeah. And so it's aha moments like that. Like, it would have been great, you know, to actually have someone else, like, really help me into it. But I'm here to help other people into whatever. And yeah. you don't have to be polyamorous. Like, I'm not no. here to coach you into being polyamorous if it's not what you want. But I'm here for it if it's what you want and you want, like, advice from someone who's been polyamorous 30-something years. Like, yeah tell you what I know (laughs) yeah that's so amazing and it's the poly community can be tough especially because the media we have about non-monogamy tends to be very thin and cisgender and abled and white and upper middle class and fairly hetero looking and still sex negative 
Yeah. Really. There can be. There's a lot of, yeah. um, you know, we're not just, it's not about the sex. Polyamory is not about the sex. Life and, is about sex. And I agree that, like, no, that, you know, there are ace people who do polyamory, people who are asexual who can do polyamory. Polyamory is not necessarily about sex, but for the vast majority of people who do it, sex is a part of it. Mm-hmm. And it's a big part of it. You know, we also have a lot of love and a lot of relationships, and we have a lot of sex. And I've heard people make arguments like, if you have casual sex, that's not poly. If you X, Y, Z, that's not poly. And I don't, I just don't understand. Like, having casual sex doesn't mean you're not monogamous, right? And just because you're having casual sex with someone doesn't mean that it's not a relationship. It's just not your typical escalator romantic relationship. Yeah. Because I've got one friend, we've been friends for 23 years. And it's always been just casual sex. When he's in my city, when I'm in his city, Mm -hmm. hey, you want to fuck? Yeah, let's fuck. That's it. We may not even talk to each other until we're back in each other's cities. Hey, you want to fuck? Yeah, let's fuck. We're just casual sex buddies. But it's been 22 years. Yeah, I mean, I have, there's a, a friend of mine who I talk to on and off, and we've hooked up a few times over the years, and like, when we're both in relationship situations where that matters, and we're in places that it works, we hook up. But it's not, it's still a relationship. Like, if he called me tomorrow and needed to talk about some stuff, I would be there for him. Right, right. So I think that a lot of what I've found in the world of non-monogamy for me has been helpful, has been kind of like picking apart and untangling what our messages are about what is a relationship and what's not a relationship. Right. And like where those messages come from and the ways that like a ton of it is about capitalistic ways of keeping the proletariat down. Yes. (laughs) You know? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Hello. So I'm so happy to hear about all this work that you're doing. And we're unfortunately out of time today. But, like, I really hope that I get to talk to you again in the future. Awesome. Thank I love that. Thank you so that. much for all of your work. And, again, where can people find you? Poly Free Love on any social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Snapchat, Google. It's whatever. Find me. Message me. I respond. Please go check this person out. Thank you all so much. Bye.